In case everybody's wondering, I'm experimenting with videotaping off my phone instead of a camcorder. And also, I'm stepping way outside my comfort zone and attempting another color pencil rendering, which I am not real comfortable with. I actually enjoy. I'm using Bristol Strathmore or Strathmore Bristol paper and uh, Karen Dash fan color pencils. They were all I really could afford. when I bought my color pencils. I'd like to get a hold of some Durant or, or some uh, Polychromos. I don't know if this video is wiggly or not, the way I'm shooting it. I mean, it could be. Doing all these uh, little nuances in the flesh tone is uh, Quite an undertaking on this I'm using a little bit of an airbrush technique doing figure eights in circles with the color pencil to uh, highlight some of the pores in the skin. I'm building my depth slowly. I'm gonna try live next. needs a lot more pink in the flesh tone up in here. I'm going to take out a little of this orangey color. It's got a re lot of reflective light in there. And work back in the highlight to Tombi Mono Zero Eraser. I've got a Sakura Electric Eraser. I've got a few favorite Castle Erasers. This is a blending brush. So that I don't push into the tooth of the paper too hard. And then let's go back in with the white.
And yes, this is Wolverine. Hugh Jackman. Who Jackman? <laughs> you. The light source is coming from the left. On my picture. This is a dark gray, it's not black. Switching back and forth between pencils quite a bit. Just trying to get the blend right. It's very hard when you get a very limited supply of pencils. So you gotta mix a lot. Right now I'm just dabbing into it. Add the pink into there. It's not like drawing fur. Fur is a lot different. Texture is way different. I tried doing this on Stonehenge and I didn't. There was a lot more tooth on that. I don't. I like Stonehenge, but it wasn't working for this drawing. So I changed, tossed that one out and started this one. Yeah, I know. I don't want that color. I want this color. I want more of a chocolatey brown into there. Working very lightly off the tip of the pencil. Go to a black. Okay, and this actually branches out into a Y on the upper part here. to go into a real dark, dark shadow in here. I'm not going to tape all of this. I don't think it would be too boring. I'm going to kind of blending, Faber-Castell blending pencil here. To blend that out. Now I'm going to take my Sakura. I got it filed down to a little point on the end. It's hard to see. But I'm just going to 
touch it in a few spots here. A couple curves to kind of emulate some highlights on the sides of the pores. Now this side, because it's coming out of the wrinkle, or the crease, it's got a little bit of shadow still before it hits the highlight. Same with over on this one. This comes all the way over like that. I'm going to use that blender again just to soften those marks up. I have to get rid of them just to soften them. That's not that bad. Now. This comes around. Spot in here like this. It needs a little lightened. Now I can understand how this would take a long, long time to do color pencil renderings. Some of the color pencil artists out there boggle my mind at how they can do this. I am not at all used to Doing this, especially I chose a photo with a lot of, a lot of skin texture, just to challenge myself and really teach myself how to use. I used to do colored pencils when I was really young. Now it's uh, now I mainly do airbrush. I love to airbrush. It's my heart and soul when it comes to painting. Unfortunately, the uh, art world frowns on it, and I don't, I've never understood why. I personally tried to break down that barrier by submitting pieces to galleries, and it just never worked. They don't want to don't want to entertain that airbrush artist too much. But, to each his own, I guess. I used a tracing app to lay down my image. Only because I didn't want to take the time to sit there and draw it all out and erase and draw and erase and draw to get the image correct. I wanted to spend most of my time working on developing how I make textures 
for the flesh tone and teach myself how to do that. It's not hard. Once you figure out a technique that works for you. I'm simply layering, 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 color upon color, trying to work in these little circles and work across his forehead here. Get into the other eye so that I can balance the color between the two eyes, because if I do one eye, and then go to the other eye and leave this undone, then I won't get the correct balance. Okay, there's a little highlight in there. I'm using the round tip, but what I've been doing every once in a while is I'll cut the tip into a point as best as I can. I need to Put in my pinks and then a little bit more of a yellowish flesh tone for the reflective light but then I'll go back in with an orange orange takes down the harshness of the reds Oops, that would be a little too dark. Trying to get the inside of that little mark there. Yes, this is very daunting to uh, do all these little tiny, tiny marks. I mean, you don't have to do them. You can make a generalization. But if you want an impressive photorealistic, I guess you got to take the time to do it, huh? In here, this isn't that bright. There's only a couple spots up on there. Yeah, because that's... I got to do something here so that I keep my spot at where I'm I'm paying attention a lot to the shapes of the shadows so I can correctly reproduce the shape of the skin over the muscle and bone. Now, this starts going into the eyebrow. is right in here. Yeah. 
this comes in here. And then there's another little triangular looking shape in here. It's a little bit lighter. It's kind of a creamy color in there. Hmm. Not real pink. It's kind of an off yellow flesh in here. And we're gonna blend it out. I think in here I don't like to go too deep on the reds the red is very overpowering and if you ever find your red is getting too intense you can go back in with uh, a green to subdue those reds in fact Do that right in here choosing the right depth of green as you can see that green just balanced that right out just then Orange takes and works for the blue shift that you can get in color. And green is the contrasting color that subdues and neutralizes the reds. And yes, I am not hitting, I'm not just burnishing everything down. I'm more just blending with this colorless blender at the moment. I don't want to fill up the fibers of the paper. I'm always checking the values in my reference to make sure I haven't gone too far past what I have and what I want. I'm adding a little gray into here. It's not really a crease so much in the skin. It's just a little divot. It's creating a shadow. You can use a little bit of blue even because the, the blue mixing into the browns will give you that gray. Let's try a little, let's try a little greenish blue actually on these. Uh, real light, I'm barely touching it. I just want a little bit of pigment going down on there. This has got to be lightened up on top. 
because that's starting to come out into the forehead and it's not such a prominent Looking close to the reference. I wish I had a needle, a needle sharp eraser tip. But uh, other than maybe scraping, but this paper does not take well to scraping. I'd really need a real. I'd really kind of need a hot press paper right now I'm trying to imitate a few pores catching the light oops clumsy Yeah, this works much better on a hot press surface that's really sealed to do this scraping technique. Something I learned with airbrush. What I could try sharpening down a Our favorite castle penny racer to a fairly fine point. As usual, it breaks the tip right off. I think the Tombow works better than that. See if I can uh, see if I can sharpen that tip on a little. You got here a automotive Scotch uh, soft touch. It's 800 grit. As you can see, I've sharpened pastel uh, pencils on it. I'm just sanding away the tip to make more of a point. It won't last long. There's a little better point. I use that for scuffing helmets. Now you gotta put that back in. So I got a little more resistance when I press on it. It's working a little bit better, but still. The hardest thing for me is the frustration of limited colors. But if you want photorealistic, I guess you gotta be patient, take the time, work real intricate and tiny. I'll switch to the side to smooth this. I 
used this uh, technique for years working on drawing and pastel it's very common So you don't get that hard pointed look. Okay, we're gonna go in now with uh, a yellowish flesh tone in here. And then I'll go, and I'm also doing circular patterns into this. And then I'll go over with a little bit of pink. And now I'm going to go back into my dark brown. This is uh, 1288. Just gonna work on those edges and to get the dimension in the skin. <clears throat> to give the look of a curved surface. Got to darken that crease because it's really dark in there. Right in the center of that crease. It's not a line. It may look like a line, but it's not a line. It's a shadow created by the fold of the skin. shadow that comes down off of here. Mm, shoot. Screwed that up. It actually comes down above that. Put a little bit of pink back into there. And uh, this actually is up equal to his other eyebrow. And it comes straight across like this. Get that nice scowl. And then this comes down. There, this comes down here. This is actually this. Okay, and then that part is where the second highlight, I went a little dark in there. Mm. 
this little crease coming over. It's a little too far on his forehead. Should have drawn that eyebrow in first because that way I could have seen that I had my position off for this one shadow. Let's look there. This crease ends up, or this little area needs lightened up. I went too dark here. Oops. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to uh, look at the camera from a diff for a different perspective. It's further away. It looks further away, so you can get the gist of your color balance, and you can see if things are lining up correctly. Because this comes off, crease of the eye, it's right here. There's a little more shadow here. And there's a tiny one in here. And this one kind of comes right above where the pupil is laying below it. that shape. That's the bottom of the eyebrow. Right. Let's lighten this up just a hair. Because this is straight across from that. Here's this eyebrow is down. I gotta work in more on that too, so it's not that. Okay, comes across. Well, let's do a little of the eye. In. This eye is really dark. So I already put in the outline. Oh, there was something I wanted to fix on this one that I noticed last night looking in my photograph that looked that around right. make sure that's that's an illusion I think because of this Lighten up just under it. I think that'll look better. Oh, I know what it is. It's inside the eye. That's throwing me off is this right here. There. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. All right. We're going to put a little grays in here. In the reference, there's really not much color in this at all. Before I go, this dot is bigger. Yep. 
And then, um, and then This is a highlight. Light's coming in the eye this side and coming out of the pupil and the cornea over here. So it's darker here. You can see that spot where the light's hitting it and then it's bouncing back out of the eye over here. So it's always a light source, dark, then the reflection comes out. This is a little darker over in this one. But just doing a little touching on it. Not doing a lot of color. Adds a lot of character into the eye. And then also there's a slight shadow caused by the upper lid. It's deceptive. This is not. His eyes not coming down like that. That was it's hard to tell in my reference because it's so dark. There's a shadow that runs across there, but it almost looks like a line in the reference. And then this. Comes it down like so. And we've got another shadow coming up underneath. A little bit of blue in there. Shadows on white have a blue tint. really dark above on that So 
besides the one. There. Because that's the shadowed side of that eye. There's a little bit of red in there. Or pink in the corner of the eye coming in. Maybe a little bit redder than this, actually. Let's go a little darker. I don't want to go too dark. Just a light, light touch. Okay, we got a little spot. Gonna lift a little paint out of there to make it look like a watermark or a tear. Now I got it up. Maybe the brown. little area in there. using brown in here and then I'm going to go back in with blue and that will give the impression of using black but the color will be a little more brilliant Let's, uh, I don't like the way this one's up higher, even though in the reference it is kind of like that. I'm going to raise this one, and then uh, lower this one a little. up this one that's a that that looks a little more balanced a little more accurate Same with this one over here. There. Now that little specula in the eye looks more accurate. This needs to be shadowed a lot more over here. It is near impossible to see what's actually going on in this eye. Around these.
these eye folds, eyelid folds, and see that comes up like that. Okay, we just got to lighten this. This kind of actually okay. now a little darker brown above this. There's a little more green in that eye than that. I want to darken it, so I'm going to use a really bright green to tint that. And a little more green over here. There, that looks nicer. I don't want to change what we're seeing in there, but... You, uh, you can enhance things a little more. If you think it's not working in your composition, change it a little. This is just for myself. I'm not doing this for anybody in particular. I mean, if anybody wants it, definitely can have it once it's done. flat ridge that runs on the lower lid. And this is a little shadow coming out here. Curves around with the shape of the lid on top. Shadow works into that. The shadow comes around. Always pay attention to the shapes of your shadows. And that people have asked me a lot about how to get proper shading and depth into the painting that, that they're not really good at shadowing and shading. And it's all a matter of paying attention to the shape of this shadow following around here, maxing out right here. Because it's not a flat surface, so your shadow wouldn't be flat. Now we can work in some really few dark spots. Again, 
that deepest spot in there. Same with this one over here. Deepest spot. And then coming up out of that crease, a little bit of shadow, but not as much. And we're going to go back in a little red. Got like an orangish red here. It's not quite red. And I'm going to pick out a couple little spots because this side's darker this side's more pink this side's more red because of the lighting flesh tone on top of that. Alright. I'll take the Tombow. And we'll bring this highlight back up. Brightest ones right here in this middle. Okay. And we got another little spot that's lighter here. Like I said, if I could get a Sakura with a pinpoint eraser, that would be sweet. I mean, it, it burns away so fast. I mean, a lot of people will take and they'll hit it with the edge. Then, of course, it wears down that edge, too. Sounds like I'm pressing real hard, but I'm barely touching that surface. It's just, this eraser is uh, such a high revolution. There we go. Now we want to go back in. No, 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 no. Let's go with the pink. I don't want to obliterate what I just got in there okay let's take a look what the camera looks like yeah yeah i think i need a little more red in that that's it's awful gray in here so I'm, I'm gonna layer over with the pink Try to balance it out more. Pink in the red. Pink in the red. Pink in. The... Yeah, sorry. I'm losing it. And under here is I. The lower lid is always real. Pinkish. All right, let's do a little blending in there. All 
I hope the sound of my voice ain't that annoying for you. I put up a video the other day and YouTube didn't like it because it had music playing in the background and they said it's copyrighted music, you can't play that. And it's not that I put a soundtrack in it, it just had my music playing. Uh, oh well. I think they just didn't like my Christian music. Right. One little nice trick I've learned to make the eyes look moist because there's tear ducts in it. Let's put these down here out of my hand. You take, now it's not really in my reference, but I want it because it, it always adds so much. Little bit speck of white. Let's bring that. This one's got to come up. I don't want a lot. Just a little. It's like a little bit of tear catching that light, making it pop. It brings the, the eye to life. It really makes it pop out. Well, all right. we're across to the other eye now. Got a good balance. I think we could use a little more red. Uh, pick a color. I don't want to go dark red. I wanna... A little more red into here. Kind of try to balance this a little bit better. Also, let let the texture of the paper do some work for you too. And pay attention to your shapes and all, and the skin. You know, like in here, I, I didn't do that. It just happens on the paper. So use it to your advantage. This spot here. See again right there if you see that little white spot. It, I mean you're not making a photograph, you're making a replication of a photograph, which in turn will give you the liberty to uh be creative and you can enhance it as you see fit you can go photorealistic to the point where every little dot and pore is perfectly replicated coming from my airbrush uh, background I've always set a goal to try to do that 
And I'll tell you, it's, it becomes all consuming inside you. You just, I got to do it. I got to figure out how to do this. There's different papers that can help you achieve what you're looking to do and different tools you can use to achieve that. Just like Stonehenge, I found is has a lot more tooth, a lot more bumps on the surface where uh, where Bristol has a smaller amount. Then you can go into a Canson paper, uh, ultra smooth. That's actually a pen and ink and. That one becomes very hard to lay down any any colored pencil. It's definitely produced for pen and ink. They ain't lying when they said that. Let's see, we got lines coming here. These this coming around. Okay. Now I'm going to pick out a little, lighten some spots in here. To Create a little more of that skin texture. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. Got some stuff to do. Post this up. Catch you later. <laughs>